Just about everyone has heard of the city of Pompeii for the terrible reason of being eviscerated by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, which is credited to be 100,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Today, we are going to dive into another strange reason to remember Pompeii by. The brothels. Welcome to another edition of our series on brothels throughout history. Today, we are traveling back in time to one of ancient Rome's premier vacation destinations, Pompeii. If there is anything that modern television has taught us about ancient Rome, is that they love to rock and roll all night and party every day. Anyone tuning into shows like Netflix's Rome or Star's Spartacus would quickly get the impression that Rome's aristocracy were no strangers to sex, booze, and an outright good time. The reality of history is not far off of that sentiment either. Historians believe the city of Pompeii started out as an unnamed village back in the 8th century BC. With the rise of the Roman Empire came the rise of Roman influence. The lasting evidence of Roman impact has luckily, or not so luckily, been preserved under several feet of volcanic ash. From what archaeologists can discern from the well-preserved city blocks, is that the Romans added to the village in 89 BC, turning it from a small coastal village to a proper city. As the decades came and went, Pompeii came to be the premier destination for aristocratic vacations. Pompeii found itself swarming with the wealthy, swarming their streets, looking to take a break from the hustle and bustle of Rome. Without the coddles of modern-day technology, the methods of blowing off steam boiled down to either visiting a pub or visiting a brothel. Unlike the modern age, in ancient Rome, visiting brothels was not only legal, but widely socially accepted as well. The social stigma around hiring a prostitute was practically non-existent. So much, in fact, going to the brothel in Pompeii was seen as just another simple errand, like going to the market or shopping for new clothes. Women of the Pompeii night worked in small rooms with stone beds, now, of course, it is quite probable the prostitutes had wood beds as well, but they would have perished in the eruption of Vesuvius. So, any evidence of beds that were left behind in the city ruins were made of stone. The stone beds weren't made to be comfortable, however. It was quite the opposite. The stone beds were purposely built to make sure clients did not get too comfortable and fall asleep after services were rendered. Historians believe that the rooms were dimly lit, to facilitate a sensual atmosphere. The walls had paintings depicting lewd acts to serve as a menu of sorts for the brothel's patrons. Some speculate that these paintings would also serve as instruction manuals for the more virginal guests of the brothels. There is a theory that these paintings are also a reason why it took much longer than it could have to discover the ruins of Pompeii. Italian architect Domenico Fontana was planning a dig for a canal when he discovered ruin walls with one of these erotic paintings. He covered the wall up and kept his discovery a secret due to the paintings making him feel shame for just looking at them. As archaeologists centuries later excavated more and more of the city, the official brothel of Pompeii was believed to be found, the Lupinar. The Lupinar is the largest pleasure house discovered in the city so far. It features five rooms on the ground floor and five larger ones on the second floor. It is situated conveniently between the Pompeii Forum and the city's business district. So the aristocrats of Pompeii could get their rocks off after conducting their daily business errands and before going to the Forum to discuss the day's governmental questions. The size of the Lupinar is not its only distinguishing characteristic. Within the rooms, you will find graffiti etched into the walls by the brothel's guests, documenting their presence there and the performance of their sex partner. To locate the building was, in of itself, quite the adventure. To people that have never visited Pompeii before and wanted to get a load off, all they had to do was follow the phalluses carved in various building exteriors pointing the randy people to their desired locations. Think of it like all those fun scavenger hunts that you had in grade school. Actually, no, don't think of it like that. 
Now, it may seem that the story of brothels in Pompeii is full of whimsy and good-natured leisure, but the brothels of Pompeii have a dark side as well. Most of the time, the prostitution roster was full of slaves from conquered nations that were forced to the job against their will. The slaves, men and women alike, were never paid for their work and lived at the brothel, in the very rooms they provided services. These rooms looked less like a home and more like jail cells, being windowless and dank. To add to that, while it was accepted for men to seek services from women of the night, the prostitutes themselves were heavily stigmatized. Once entering or being forced in the profession, the women were ostracized and ineligible for any other job. This effectively locked them into a low societal class. The current tourism industry at Pompeii is far from ashamed of this dirty aspect of the long, ashen city. Visitors can purchase, at the plethora of souvenir stands, plates and bowls with copies of the lewd paintings in the lupinar engraved on them. Or, if you can't afford that fine china that will certainly impress the in-laws next Thanksgiving, you can splurge on decks of playing cards with the same racy paintings printed on them. All of these aspects of the lupinar can be seen throughout all the brothels of ancient Rome. The vast majority of the fiery frescas that we see are from Pompeii simply because the city has been so well preserved over the millennia because, well, you know. After all, in the other well-known, well-preserved ancient Roman town, Herculaneum, also buried in the very same eruption of Mount Vesuvius, many similar works of art and suspected brothels were found. Prostitution was so prevalent in ancient Roman culture that prostitution references in Latin culture is plentiful. Ancient Roman historians tell tales of prostitutes that gained respectability, something that is extremely difficult considering the automatic stigma placed on the profession, through patriotic acts, law-abiding behavior, and paying taxes. The high-class call girl, or meritrix, was a character archetype in the comedies of Plautus. Many ancient Roman poems offer depictions of prostitution as well. Prostitution also wasn't only for those that had it as a day job. Often actors and gladiators would moonlight as prostitutes as well. They found this gig rather profitable as their professions made them inherently desirable. Even with how sexually open the average Roman was, some still found a place to draw a line. Cato the Elder, ancient Roman historian, senator, and philosopher, held the belief that every good Roman man should be held to a certain standard when it came to masculinity. He found it shameful that male prostitutes would be on the receiving end of male clients and saw it dishonorable that any man would allow himself to be penetrated. He scoffed at the actions of men in bathhouses across all of Rome and turned his nose up at Roman men who called a brothel their workplace. But even with Cato's disdain, these activities would never cease. There can be a lot to argue about when it comes to the Roman Empire. Is it the greatest empire of all time? What was the reason for its downfall? Overexpansion or the rise of anti-intellectualism? or those pesky Gauls? Perhaps all three. One thing that cannot be argued, though, is that those Romans knew how to have a damn good time. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification bell to be notified of new, intriguing historical videos. You can leave in the comment section suggestions of other fascinating events or eras in our world's history that you would like us to cover in our upcoming videos.